Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie with a little bit of Linux in the news here. And today we're going to take a look at something that happened a few days ago. And yeah, I'm a little bit behind here in getting the news out about it. But it concerns Kali Linux. A new refresh was just released last week on 25 April. And Kali, of course, is a rolling release distro, so it doesn't really release new versions per se because everything gets updated automatically anyway by just doing a normal system update. So if you already have Kali Linux installed, there's no need to jump through the hoops to try to install a new version or do an upgrade to a new version or anything like that. This just means that this is a refreshed media set so that now when you download this ISO file and do an install of Kali, you won't have like, like gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of updates, which are going to take you forever. So this is just new stuff, but they do have some new features that they have added mainly in the form of some wireless chipset drivers and some improved GPU support. And there are now also Azure and AWS images of Kali if you want to put it on the cloud. So that's good news, right? And also, just as an aside, which something that has benefited me is that the previous uh, iteration, I guess you sh should say, had a bug in it so that it would just flat out not work under VirtualBox in a VirtualBox virtual machine. Well, that has been resolved. So if you've had problems with getting it to work with VirtualBox before, well, that problem now appears to be fixed because now it works fine. But anyway, let's go here and take a look at some more news about it. Kali Linux can now use cloud GPUs for password cracking. Okay, so what's that mean? Well, that means that you can, well, you can rent out GPU power from the cloud and run the password cracking tools and try to break into stuff. And of course, it says here, Kali's a favorite for white hats, but it doesn't stop the black hat guys from using it too. And, you know, this is something that's been very, very controversial ever since the whole concept of penetration testing emerged. And that's the fact that, you know, people say that, hey, you know, when we create these tools and when we impart this information about how to hack into stuff, we're giving ammunition to the bad guys. So why are we doing it? Why are we making their jobs easier? Well, we're really not because the bad guys are going to be coming up with these tools and techniques anyway. The whole concept of penetration testing is to try to make sure that the good guys, the guys that we trust, will find the vulnerabilities before the bad guys do. So with the password cracking, of course, the whole concept behind that is that we you run password cracking tools against our own servers or against our customer servers if we are professional penetration testers. And of course, we're only going to do that with specific written permission because we want to keep out of trouble. But we want to find if any of our users are using weak, easily cracked passwords, right? So if we find the passwords that are weak, you know, we can tell the people, hey, you need to get a new password here, right? But anyway, thank passwords, people. Think long, complex passwords, not just because a breach dumps landed, but because the security probing oriented Kali Linux just got better at cracking passwords. So the developers behind the distro this week gave it a polish, adding new images optimized for GPU instances in Azure and Amazon Web Service. The extra grunt the GPUs afford, Kali backers say, will enhance the distribution's password probing powers. There's also better support for GPU cracking. Hence our warning at the top of the story, anyone can use Kali and there's no way to guarantee that black hats won't press it into service. And they can now do so on as many GPU boosted cloud instances as they fancy paying for. 
So how do you protect yourself from this? Let's say that you're the customer now. You are the client and you want to protect yourself from these password cracking attacks. So what do you do? Well, it really depends upon what platform you have that you're trying to protect. And in this instance here, let's say that we have a Linux server or a Unix server and you have to have it set up so that people can access it via secure shell in order to do their jobs. Well, in the first place, in SSH, in the SSHD config file, always, always, always disable the root user login. You don't want the root user to be able to log in via secure sh shell. And better yet, just don't enable the root user account on the operating system. And just set the administrators up with only the pseudo privileges that they need for their specific jobs. Now, yeah, I know that sometimes there are some tasks that can only be done from the root command prompt. Now, that's okay. You know, you take your people who need those privileges to go to the root command prompt, set them up with the privileges to do so. But for everybody else, just set them up with the specific privileges that they need to do their jobs. Also, disable the secure shell logins via username and password and just to use a key exchange instead. Some of y'all may have heard me say this before, but there have been break-ins, especially a couple years ago in Asia, there was a whole bunch of servers that got broken into just because the people, the administrators, left the root user login enabled, and these were on internet-facing servers now, mind you. They left the root user login enabled, and they also, on top of that, the root users had very weak passwords. So there's this Hail Mary botnet, which scans the internet, just looking for servers that have the root login enabled. Okay, well, not just the root login. They, have, they look for servers that have the uh, username and password login enabled. So once they find those servers, they scan them and they bombard them with these brute force password cracking attacks to try to get into the system. Okay, and of course, they are going to try the root user because, well, that's the only one they really know. So in this case, as I said, you know, it just happened that the root user login was enabled and they were using weak passwords, so the botnet succeeded in breaking into the systems and Planet Malware, which basically joined those machines to the botnet. But if you disable the SSH login via username and password, just use Key Exchange instead, Windows botnets scan your system and they find that they can't log in via username and password, they're just going to go away and leave you alone. So very, very good way to enhance your security greatly. Now for other things, web accounts, you use strong passwords. Got to use strong passwords. And this is something which is going to apply to everybody, not just to administrators, not just to people who are running Linux or Unix servers. This applies to everybody, whether you're just a regular consumer, you know, trying to access your bank account or whatever else. So use strong passwords. And if you can't remember strong passwords, use a password manager like KeePass. It's cross-platform. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And also, you want to take appropriate steps to protect your passwords. Like, you know, don't put the sticky notes on your monitor with your password to your bank website. Okay? Just don't do it. All right? Make your password strong. And, you know, don't be using names of your husband or your wife or your pets or your children, okay? You know, don't use passwords that will be able to be connected to you in some manner, all right? So, uh, as I said, just use something such as KeePass. KeePass will generate a password for you, and you can use some sort of a backup service such as as Spider Oak in order to back up that encrypted password database file and that way you'll never lose it and you can synchronize that across all your different machines then. So if you are a security professional, if you have or if you have an interest in learning and you already know something about Linux, I don't recommend Kali for beginners, for Linux beginners, but if you're a security professional, 
and you want to check out the new features, then by all means, go ahead and grab that ISO image or update the image that you already have and uh, give it a go. All right. So anyway, that's pretty much all I have. In the description below, you will see a link to my Amazon affiliate bookstore. So be sure to click on that and uh, peruse all you want and make a purchase if you like. And even if you buy something which is not in the bookstore after you click on that link, it still helps me out. So by all means, check it out. So if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.